All right. I think I'm getting an audio here on the recording, yeah? All right. Okay. So I guess I should recap what I just said. I'm going to be taking a look at earnings for this week, another big week on earnings. Take a look at unusual whales, see what the implied moves are for uh, some of the different companies reporting this week. We'll make a list of the ones that we're going to be interested in. Uh, as well as take a look at where spies at on the daily here, the weekly, and uh, we'll bring it back to, we'll do a longer time frame analysis, a shorter time frame analysis on spy and fix, and uh, yeah, pretty much it. We'll just uh, keep it simple, just like every day. And uh, okay, so I'm gonna clear these drawings here off the spy chart. This is just the spy daily right now. I have no. Uh, there are zero indicators on the chart so if you're looking at what we're looking at here is definitely an extended downside from uh, the beginning of March looking like the MACD has an opportunity to cross up potentially for a small bounce up if I'm just taking a look at this it looks like we're coming down on uh, this descending wedge a break above that would send us into let's take a look at here so we're taking a look at spy here down from March to present date and uh, you can see that it rejected off the top of this channel here and made its way back down futures as of right now are pretty bright green so we could expect if things stay the same, uh, an opening gap up tomorrow, that would put us up close to this 394, 396 level, where it uh, saw a high on Friday. It saw the high at what, 396.80? Was that the high Friday? Let me double check that. 397.04. So. If we want to uh, see if it's going to test the top of this range here of this wedge, probably be something like I'm saying like 398. 398 would be the top 399, and uh, a breakout above that could send us into a break of this downtrend. If not, then we're going to get rejected back down to as low as 375, 370. And uh, that's honestly what I think is more likely to happen. Uh, if we do get an extended bounce for a couple days here, it would prove me wrong. But I'm guessing that Monday, Tuesday, we'll see maybe a slight bounce on Monday where we stay even by the end of the day. And then by Tuesday, we'll get that rejection. <clears throat> Wednesday, we'll get that rejection maybe looking at this timeline here. The 25th be Wednesday. That's what I'm looking at here. If we take a look at Ichimoku on the daily, we're still in a downtrend. If we look at the cloud, lagging is still below the cloud. Conversion line is the momentum, so con momentum is pointed straight down. <clears throat> and it's still far from the base. The base is starting to come down here, so not that it's found a bottom yet but looks like it could be finding a bottom uh, the interesting thing here on the MACD too if you look at on the 17th it looked like it went across uh, when it tried to break out of the top of this channel that one day what was that last Thursday Wednesday we had that crazy we had a couple crazy days there actually and uh, we'll look at the look at these candles the range on the spot has been about nine to eleven dollars a day twelve dollars a day so just insane movement on the indexes that can't last uh, so we'll see if it can break out of this trend it rejected here and we ended the day on somewhat of a doji candle on Friday so if we do get a rebound I'm guessing that we're gonna get a rejection off that and fall back down so I'd be looking to take short take a short on spy around 398 I could put a level here. If we do get an extended bounce 
uh, f- tomorrow that sees us run up as high as 398, then, uh, yeah, just about. Then I'd be looking to scale in my short position on a weekly basis. Uh, not like zero DT or anything, but take a short maybe into a few the next week out or something like that. Uh, now let's take a look at. We'll also I'll come back and we'll take a look at spy on a shorter time frame, but that was just looking at what it's doing here on the daily. As far as VIX, could bring this out a little bit further. Jesus, what a shit show. So uh, I'm not going to read too far into this, obviously, because. VIX has uh, been moving pretty erratically lately, you can see. Tested the bottom of this cloud here on the daily. Went back up, fell back in, and now it had a clean, a really clean bounce there off its leading B, which would be considered the strongest support here on the daily. So you'd be looking to go long on SPY for sure if we got a break on VIX below that 2806 level. So we could take a, we could keep that on watch for SPY, we know that, or for VIX, we know that if VIX starts downtrending, that usually means that SPY is going to start uptrending, and uh, especially up here, as high as VIX is right now, the downside, if we start seeing any kind of big downside movement on VIX, where it breaks below the support, you could exp expect SPY to make a move towards a, uh, that 398 level like we were just mentioning. Uh, okay, there was another thing I wanted to take a look at QQ at the Hughes, obviously, here on the daily. And obviously all these levels that I mark off on the charts and speak on will be included in the watch list so you don't have to worry about like taking notes or anything right now, but this is just something that you can see how my process is uh, at nighttime and how I get ready for the next day. Uh, so here we're taking a look at QQQ. The daily chart is hideous. Uh, we're pulling it back as far as March and we haven't seen lows like this since back in November 2020. Wow. Okay. So Qs are coming off of a support on the daily that goes back as 279. So complete, complete fall through here on the queues. Tech has been getting hit the hardest, obviously. And MACD, just like uh, Spy on the 17th, went to cross over and curl up, but uh, failed to do so and fell back down. Queues uh, are in a similar descending wedge formation. It's kind of more exaggerated here on the queues from this drop off here. Wow, yeah. Sorry guys, find the So when I'm looking for the wedge here, I'm looking for on, on the daily, I'm looking for where candles are refusing to break out on the top here. So we have like the shooting star on the daily going back to April 21st here on the queues. And uh, then we made another shooting star here on the 27th that continued more downside. We found a bottom here on the 12th at 284 and then as low as 280 at the bottom of this hammer candle here on on the queue so a pretty big hammer candle when you're looking at the daily and uh, how this downtrend is going I wouldn't be surprised to see if it retested 300 I mean it's getting beat down severely here everything on the Nasdaq is so I wouldn't be surprised I'd be looking for it to break 
above this conversion line here on the daily at like 294 65 and that would kind of line up with the previous daily candle on Thursday as well as Friday yeah about there Once again, when we're looking at the dailies here, this would be to take a long position further out, not zero DTE or anything like that, but this would be to uh, take a swing position. All right, so we have some levels leveled off on cues for long, for spy, here for resistance, and VIX here for support. Okay, so we took care of that. Now let's move over to earnings for this week. So most anticipated earnings releases for this week, uh, like I said at the beginning, huge week. Uh, a big week for retailers again, just like last week. And we won a huge biggest play of the year, obviously, on Target. So we're going to be targeting a lot of these retail plays. And... Uh, Main ones to look at here would be Best Buy uh, on Tuesday before open. Uh, Nordstrom this is going to be another one that I'm going to be taking a look at for sure here. Uh, Urban Outfitters. Uh, if we're, we're going to make a, a master list, though, it would probably be something like for each day here. Uh, I'm going to be watching Zoom after close on Monday for short. Uh, Best Buy short. On Tuesday morning, I'll be looking on Wednesday to go long on NVIDIA after close. Uh, NVIDIA is beaten down about 44% year-to-date. So I'm going to be betting that even if guidance is a little bit weak here, we'll get some kind of relief bounce there off uh, earnings. AMD had good earnings. It was a short-lived bounce there, but I think that NVIDIA could really take the lead in semiconductors in that way and really just start bringing that sector back or it could not that's going to be probably one of my bigger gambles on the week this week uh, another Canadian banks a couple big Canadian banks are reporting this week is TD reporting? no so BMO, Scotiabank I'll take a look at those charts too. Uh, Dollar Tree is another interesting one. Uh, inflation hitting Dollar Tree. Prices actually increasing uh, their bottom line. I'm guessing increasing as a result. That's kind of an interesting retail play. I kind of want to do a little bit more digging into that tonight. Um, Alibaba is another big one here. Costco, obviously. Thursday's a huge day. Thursday's going to be probably the biggest day. Other than Wednesday with uh, NVIDIA. So let's take a look at... We'll keep these up, but we'll take a look at uh, the implied moves. Unusual Whales has this uh, anticipated earnings page here. You can find it by just going to Extras and going to Earnings. Uh can take a look at here right now this is the calendar view but if you just bring it out like this you can get this view and it will show you the implied move here over on the right uh, if you follow Snorlax on Twitter he, um, he usually makes these posts with the implied moves this is where he's getting those numbers from so uh, if we're taking a look for this week All right, so Zoom has an implied move here of 18%. That one is huge. Kirk has a 29% implied move. Kirkland's. Wow. Hmm. 
Hmm. This cope on Kirk is crazy looking. this company. Sorry I'm getting quiet here guys. I was just uh, kind of shocked by this 29% implied move here on Kirk but we'll go back to that too. Um, Alright so Zoom was the one that we were looking at for Monday after close. Where the fuck are you? There you are. Okay. 18% implied move. Let's take a look at the flow. Puts a call ratio on Friday. Intraday 0.731. 42,000 calls to 31,000 puts. Go to the flow history page here. Let's just see if anything sticks out. Hmm. So a pretty steep drop off here. Input to call ratio from Thursday to Friday. Biggest options trades on Friday. Hmm. Surprisingly, 70% bullish. Seven out of the 10 trades here were bullish, including the top two. Selling a 95 put, buying a 95 call. Interesting, interesting. Zoom, a COVID darling, obviously, beaten down like crazy from its highs, but I have trouble believing that they're gonna beat. Maybe expectations are so low here. <laughs> they're just uh, betting on a beat. Let's take a look at some of these alerts that came in from Unusual Whales Zoom. Oh, nothing, nothing recently. Those are from March. Hmm. So it looks like a decent amount of buy volume. Three, one, two, three. There we go. Yeah, in the last hour and a half of Friday, a decent amount of buy volume came in. And that put, put to call ratio did f drop off pretty hard there. Let's take a look at this chart. Hmm. All right, so this is tightening up a bit here on Zoom for a potential breakout or rejection. But we see the makings of a crossover here on the MACD. Okay, all right, so I'm gonna make a turn like of some levels here at the top of these dailies. So the top of that channel is around 95.
bottom here around 84. It's the range that it's been playing on the daily here. Still well below this downtrend, still widening out. Let's take a look at the ATR levels for swing. All right, so Friday, uh, if we're taking a look at the ATR levels, I'll turn off Ichi here so it's a little bit clearer. Uh, we can see, and I'll get rid of my little wedge I drew here. You can see uh, these are the Fib tracement levels on the daily for swing levels on uh, ATR for Zoom. And uh, it's bouncing, it bounced and held on the daily above this 85 level. So 85 looks like a hold below that on the daily, and then we we have as low as 60, 61 here to go. And then if we break out of that 95 level, it looks like this fib here at 100 would be next. that green like that here we'll put the top of that fit level there what level is that 77 so let's just say it'd have a range to around 77 if it broke below 84 and uh, a range to about 99 if it broke above that 95 19 level so more downside opportunity here on zoom for sure and uh, that kind of correlates with that implied move of 18%. I'd probably expect an 18% uh, or at least a 10% downturn on Zoom. Uh, moving on, so that's Monday after hours for Zoom. And uh, then the following day, we have Tuesday, Best Buy reporting pre-market. And that's the one that I'd be focusing on. Okay, sorry, I just got to pull this up here on the side. We'll get a look at the implied move. Did I pass it? No way. BBY. Oh, okay. Here, perfect. I was like, did it seriously not pull it up? Okay. Uh, twelve point one percent implied move on. Uh, Best Buy, 1.6 mean estimate for uh, EPS. Let's take a look at the flow that's been coming in here. Wow, so heavy on the puts. 2.88 put to call ratio, 2.63, 1.13, 1.56. Uh, it was down 2%, 2%, 3%. So just been down it's got what one two three four five six seven almost a week seven sessions of uh, straight losses and a four percent red day okay so Best Buy has definitely been getting hot I mean getting hit uh, bullish premiums only sitting at around 52 percent call premiums sitting at 21 percent call volume at 25 put volume at 28,000 on Friday compared to 9,000 9, calls, so it's 2.88 put to call ratio. So you can see they're betting pretty hard against retail heading into earnings now. Let's 
It's an interesting chart here, though, when you're looking at the uh, half hour. It looks like after this gap down here, looks like a little bit of a rounded bottom formed on Best Buy. Let's bring this up. Yeah, there we go. That's the view I was looking at at trading view. <clears throat> okay, so looking at this, do you, uh, if you were looking at this and you see people ask you what's a cup and handle, so this would be the, the handle here, right? This gap down. And then we had a continuation, I guess. I mean, if you're looking at a larger time frame, this would be the handle. And this would be the cup. So here we're going to see, I'd be looking forward to break and hold above this Fib ATR. Is it still? Yeah, this is still the swing levels, OK? All right, so 7370. A break and hold above that on the daily will put that back in this range to about 80. It just crossed bullish here, had three, three candles of bullish buy volume there at the end of Friday. Let's take a look at the four hour. All right, so a bearish, it's pretty heavy bearish engulfing candle here on the four hour next to this bullish candle. Hmm. Looking at this four hour, it makes me want, like it is fully out of range here. Now on the daily, if you're looking at ATR, I mean, it's just fully out of range. So meaning uh, this yellow line here is the put range, right? This is the put trigger. This blue is the call trigger. And these little, these gray lines in between, they're the FIB key levels. So these are where you would consider uh, trimming off your position. And this would be considered full range. So full range to the downside, we actually crossed here at about 73, 74. So a failure to break back above 74 is just going to send this thing into oblivion. Here you can see the MACD is uh, still far apart here on the four hour with earnings coming up. Uh, last earnings here. They surprised. had a gap up to fill almost the top of that ATR level. So last time that Best Buy got uh, this low heading into earnings, and they reported here, they were boosted up. Another good earnings report here that it ended up some serious downside here afterwards so you gotta wonder if we've just yeah this is going to be a really key level i think at 74 if we can't break above that and fight back for 80 then uh i'm definitely going to be looking to take that uh well we'll keep an eye on on flow on monday but i'm, I'm thinking of taking that for a short if it fills out here on the half hour chart it can't break out of that uh, cup it'll get sent back down for sure we'll only cover two more we'll go at nvidia and we'll take a look at costco and then we'll call it so we'll take a look at NVIDIA's chart. We'll take a look at the four hour here. So similar thing, bearish engulfing candle on the four hour with a bullish here, fell, hit this mid range on the swing for ATR, which is just about uh, 
that 158, 157 level. And it's coming back up towards that swing put trigger at 174. 74.53. So you can bring this down here. And we'll hold this green line as support. Okay, so we're playing between this ridiculous range here on NVIDIA, but that's why we love it, because it gives us that range. And we'll take a look at this 30 minute. So same kind of situation here. We're looking at NVIDIA on the 30 minute. A little bit of a cup and handle forming here with it coming up on uh, some serious levels. But you've got conversion line coming up to cross over base where this could cross bullish and potentially hit 175. That'd probably be in my thesis if tomorrow we get uh, uh, futures hold, it's green at open, I could probably see a run up to this 175 level before a continuation of a rejection here. I wouldn't see it making a move much higher than that uh, before earnings. We'll see though, if uh, the next level you'd be wanting to look at is the top of this cloud here, around 178. So I'd mark that as, mark that purple. And that'll just be kind of our notice that, hey, Nvidia is definitely breaking out right now at that like 178, 86 level. So right now we're looking at the half hour right and same situation, but it did get rejected off base here. We, if we zoom out, we take a look at the top of this candle. You can see the top of this candle wicked right off that base. For this to go bullish, you wanna see this candle close above this baseline. So if this fails to be able to do that, it's gonna have continued downside. So if you were gonna take a scalp on this uh, at open, I'd wait for the first half hour and see if the half hour, the 30 minute candle, is sitting above uh, this baseline, which is something around 167, or it is right now, but once uh, the market starts moving tomorrow, it will change, it could fall or rise. But you'd wanna see after the first half hour where it is this candle relative to the baseline before making a move. If it's above, you can think that it would have range to about 175. If it uh, can't hold, it has range down to about 158. All right, like I said, we're gonna just kind of like fly through the rest, of the last few of these, but let's take a look at what the implied move is on Nvidia. Okay, so NVIDIA's got a 9.5% implied move, nothing crazy, nothing too crazy, but I'm guessing it's going to be something more than that, considering how much it's been beaten down. 9.5% uh, would probably be uh, an underreaction to uh, it if it was bullish. Uh, if it was bearish, then I'd probably think that uh, anything more than it are bearish, like we get a bad guidance heading into inflation, they think that numbers aren't gonna be looking good for semiconductors heading into the next few quarters because of inflation and uh, demand will be down, then uh, yeah, we could see a break below that 150 support, which would be really bad for semi-longs considering NVIDIA's influence on the rest of the sector. So uh, anybody long on semiconductors will definitely be looking for NVIDIA to report not only good report, uh, good earnings, but also positive, optimistic guidance heading into the next quarter. So yeah, so BBY with that 12.1% implied move.
And uh, the last one we wanted to take a look at is costs. Like I said, guys, don't worry about writing down levels and shit like that. I'll be posting them with the watch list. This is just more to give you guys a little taste of what I do every night when I'm looking through charts and trying to see what ranges plays are in. Okay. All right, similar situation here on Costco after the gap down on the 17th. Um, and this massive uh, candle here. We've just been continuing downside. We're pretty separated from Fib levels now on uh, swing levels. And we had a little bit of a hammer here on the third day, but I'd be looking to short this around four, I don't know, 425, 430 if we did get to that high uh, on a bull run tomorrow. This is just absolutely crazy. I did not realize Costco got hit this bad. I have a hard time believing Costco's gonna miss, like, Target. Ten percent, right? No, seven percent implied move. What was the flow like on Friday? Let's take a look at this flow history. Flow history. Here we go. Right, so 1.25 on Friday, 1.33, 1.74. High number of put to calls on the daily. Cope dropped off to here compared to price. Just surprising. I can't believe I remember seeing this. Last month at its highs at 600. It is unbelievable to me that this is at 400 right now. So let's bring this back on the daily and see how far it's actually gapped down relative to its run up and where it could catch some kind of support. Holy fucking shit. See, pardon my French, but this is. Wow. So the bottom of this daily candle found support over here somewhere from back in July 2021. That's how far it's retraced. And if if this is correct, it and it's fallen back into this channel here from last year in the summer then uh, a break below 400 is going to send this thing back down to the 370s. Um, Costco does have a steady reputation of gaining and inclining here, gaining and inclining, falling off, inclining, gapping down, and then continuing the move up. Pretty dramatic gap downs too on the daily for it to keep moving up how it is. But this is this is a huge test. You'd want to see it fall back into this range here between 400, 
40, 4, 50 to really get start going back long. But we have more time to see more flow coming into cost uh, throughout the week, considering that one isn't until Friday, right? Friday, or no, Thursday after close. So we'll have a little bit, a little bit more time to figure out our thesis watching the flow headed into the week. But looking right now, shit is looking bad for Costco, man. They are looking at support levels that haven't been seen since back in the summer of 2021. Uh, but they haven't missed in earnings since March 2021. Another interesting fact there. They have not missed in earnings since March 2021, and they're also coming up to a, the range that it was trading around that time too. Just have it had its dividend date. And Matty is looking awful with no reversal in sight unless we get a big gap up on one of the days, Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, ahead of Thursday. <clears throat> I know I'm forgetting something here. Uh, we covered NVIDIA, we covered Zoom, we covered Best Buy, we covered Costco. So that's four for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. Obviously other retailers are in here. Uh, to take a look at, um, I'm thinking Burlington uh, will probably be a miss. Dollar Tree and Dollar General are also really interesting to me for Thursday. Um, I'm gonna do take a look more. We're gonna, we'll have more time for those ones on Thursday. That's gonna be the biggest day I'm thinking though. So Alibaba, Baidu, there's some big China plays there that day too. Dell. Yeah, it's just packed with Costco there too. So we'll have more time to look into that. But I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I mean, if Zoom had some bullish flow coming in on it. So I guess if you wanted to YOLO some Zoom calls for earnings, that could be a, a thing to do. But my instinct is that Zoom is dead and not coming back. Best Buy is in a peculiar spot. It's looking like uh, it's got room for more downside if it can't... Uh, Recover. What was that level that we said? It was on Best Buy, like 74, 73, 71. Uh, so yeah, so there's some definitely some some things in some interesting spots here ahead, especially knowing what we know from last week, Target getting hit as hard as it did. Um, but you know, there was some surprises, like we had Canada Goose didn't get hit as hard, luxury brands didn't get hit as hard as I thought they would, so maybe looking at things like Ralph Lauren, maybe Ralph Lauren uh, actually doesn't do too bad after earnings, or maybe another one of these more, I wouldn't say Macy's, but you gotta think American Eagle fucking missed to I might just take a whole lot of puts on <laughs> American Eagle, Burlington, Macy's, just all around those clothing retailers. Nordstrom is falls into that luxury category. So yeah, it'll be interesting. I might stay away from some of those luxury plays after Goose. It's worth it to maybe short on the run-up, but maybe not hold overnight or into the earnings themselves. Uh, and Snowflake. Uh, Snowflake, what is it sitting at right now? Because defense is running up so hard with Ukraine, Russia, and then... Oh my fucking god. That is just unbelievable. It's crazy to see the declines on some of these growth plays. 400 to 141. When does the bleeding end here? <clears throat> All right, looking at this descending wedge, what well, this is the last one we'll cover here. 
Uh, look at this descending wedge on Snowflake. You can see from the high in February, uh, the top of this shooting star on the daily it was February, what, 10th? Yeah. And uh, the bottom of this wedge here was on the 14th of March when it found some sort of a bounce and then rejected off the top of this. Found some more support here. So you can see how I drew the wedge to follow the bottoms of the wicks, not the bodies of the candle, just the, the wicks themselves, and ride them all the way down till we get this cross here in this perfect looking wedge. And then you can get a better idea of the uh, zones that it's trading in here, right? So if you're looking at this on the daily, uh, a failure to hold above 126 and this is going to break even further below and then a break above 190 a break out of this that's probably lower now but a break out of this downtrend here we could see this really break out considering how much it's gotten beaten down from its highs Take a look at Snow's flow too. Snow's flows. And then I'm supposed to be going to light fireworks. Hopefully I'm alive to short these earnings. Wow, 1.71, 1.06, 1.18. That's a huge put to call ratio here though on snow headed into Friday could directly correlate with uh, Jim Cramer's love and affection of uh, defense stocks as of recently. And Snow has a 16.6% .6 implied move for earnings. So a big uh, move expected here on Snow. If it can't break out of this wedge, you expect uh, it to fall back down towards 100. Uh, if it breaks out, then 200 is definitely in the realm two. We're sitting kind of in the middle here of this downtrend. But looking at the MACD, it's starting to cross and curl up. And uh, let's bring this up to the four hour. Four hour actually kind of tells a better story here. It looks like it's about to retest the bottom of this with this bearish and bullish engulfing cloud. So if I were to zoom in on this and play this for a day trade, you'd be looking at, I'd be watching for this bullish engulfing candle for the next day to turn, for this to turn and break and hold above this conversion line. So something on, uh, yeah, no, something like this on the baseline here on the 30 minute. So 143.69, and then that would be my daily scalp level. Whenever you see my levels on the watch list and ask me how I make it, this is this is how we do it, right? We're we're taking we take a longer time frame analysis. See if we pull it out to the daily, you can still see we still have our we still have our daily trend, right? Uh, here, let me get rid of this one. We still have our. Uh, our wedge that we're watching, but we can bring it out to the 30 minute, shorter time frames. See the cup and handle after this uh, downward trend. We could see that it found a bottom, it rounded out here, and we'd look, we'd be looking to take this short here at uh, 145, and if it broke out and held above on the 30 minute, we'd be looking to take uh, 150 calls because it could go as high as this resistance here, which would be the leading B, this red line. So if I just get rid of this purple line and you're just looking at the Ichimoku, you're just wanting to see, you want to see this half hour candle close above this baseline to retest this leading B. 
All right. Um, we covered a shit ton in like 40 minutes there. Spy, IWM, or a spy, cues, fix, earnings for uh, every day of the week. Miss leaving a couple out of there, obviously, because like I said, for Thursday, we'll go into them more in depth with more data on hand. But yeah, just a little in summary, a little uh, deeper dive into how I do the watch list, uh, what I'm using, um, how I like to analyze flow. If you guys have any questions, let me know. I'll stay on for another couple minutes before I head out. Uh, Cruise, uh, total new question. I've been burned on earnings before, but maybe you know, but I don't know how to play them. Also, I usually avoid trading first 20 minutes, but can you go over how to play earnings at open? Um, like play earnings, say if they're reporting on, uh, let's talk, let's say for, uh, Best Buy before open, you wanted to play Best Buy and, uh, or at open, you wanted to play Best Buy after they reported that what you mean? Or like even, uh, if they reported after close the day before you wanted to play them. Usually, usually if you're going to play them after reported, you could take a look at, um, I've seen some people have success, um, with playing the opposite side of the trade at the beginning of the day. So what I mean by that is say if a bunch of people were betting, they had, we'll take a look at, uh, Best Buy, for example, let's go take a look at Best Buy. Okay, so the most active chains here on Best Buy you're looking at, uh, you got the 70 puts, right? And uh, 80 calls would be the the next uh, most looked at bullish chain here. And if we're looking at playing this the next day, say uh, it gaps down, and this had like an implied move of like 15%, right? So if this if this gaps down and all these people that were betting on the 80 calls, these will most likely go worthless at open and they'll want to sell them for whatever. So a strategy to play uh, earnings if you missed it either way or you just didn't play it either way is say if it gapped down, take the calls that were most uh, that were the most active the day before the earnings and try and get on for them to ride up because they'll be just trying to get out at any profit, right? So any spike on the underlying, if it moves up a little bit, the premiums will move along with that contract. So maybe the 80, maybe the 80 call contract opens up at one cent and then it literally shoots up to 10 cents and, for, and these bulls who are just completely fucked in their position just want to unload and get out. You can kind of get away with taking uh taking that profit off of their hands like you're playing with uh trash <laughs> it was previous trash to you it ends up being a premium gold mine yeah like if if earnings were uh a beat and they gap up in the morning i wouldn't want to play it long i'd want to uh look at the most popular put option that was looked at the day before and try and buy them at like a dirt cheap price and see if uh, it gets any kind of downward movement and then make money that way. Because either way, because that way you won't be really chasing, you'll just be bottom feeding instead of uh, chasing where you could really get ripped. You'll be more likely to just, you know, barely lose anything. If not, you're just throwing pennies that could reach a huge level. So yeah, that's usually the way to do it. Uh, if not, just not playing it or playing sympathies to that earnings play. Like if you're looking at uh, Best Buy, uh, you can look at uh, the correlations dashboard and take a look at other retailers and see how well they usually correlate with Best Buy. And play it off that. I'm just using Best Buy as an example now, but uh, for anything. Uh, Wow, look at this intraday volume on Best Buy too for put to call ratio, 
Mm -hmm. And looking at these most active chains, there is a lot. 50 puts are getting lit up. All right, all right. I'm going to be probably taking something like 60 puts or 60, depending. We'll see. We'll see if we get the gap up tomorrow that gets us over this 75 level or 74. All right, guys, I'm going to call it there. Uh, if you have any other questions, you can um, send me a message. I'll still be kicking around here because i got to post the watch list in a little bit, but I'm just leaving my desk for... A bit here i hope this helped out a little bit uh, let me know if it did we could start doing this maybe every every other week uh not next weekend because i'm gonna be gone for the weekend but we could do this uh maybe even intro during the week too uh yeah all right enjoy your night everybody